Hello everybody, this is Amy from Chateau de Rosière and as you know we have a 52 hectare, 130 acre estate here at Rosière and we have huge plans for this to return it back to its prime of the 17th and 18th centuries but we've got to start somewhere and one of the things we really want to get going with is an orchard for the chateau and back last September um, Mark and Clement and I went back to the UK and whilst we were there we visited a really inspirational uh, community farm project called Clink's Farm. First we're going to show you what we found out back uh, then in September and then we're going to start actually planting our orchard. Are we picking a bed? <laughs> We've come to Clink's Care Farm in Norfolk, where my mum and my brother volunteer, uh, for, to get a bit of inspiration for an orchard that we're going to plant at Rosier. Because uh, they had an open day here the other day, and uh, Dad reported back that the orchard is laden with fruit and was only planted 11 years ago. Uh, which seems a pretty good result and so we thought we'd come and have a little nosy around when it was a bit quieter and um, see what's what really and what varieties they've got and how they've done it. Yes. And we're always up for visiting trees. <laughs> Look how laden this tree is. <gasps> Gosh I thought they were plums. Yeah I did. They look like Renette these ones. Yeah. How beautiful are they? Wow, oh, look at those. What sort of uh, fruit do you want in our orchard, Mark? Every fruit. <laughs> Every possible fruit. <laughs> well, one thing I miss is these. These are the cooking apples, aren't they? I think. Yeah. Is that, a, they? Is that a variety? Yeah, well, it's a type of of apple not necessarily a variety but they you don't get them in france they're nice and sour and you can cook them nicely yeah, and they go we well you're not when it comes to apples unless you're up in the north in normandy what a beautiful orchard gosh we could have something like this within 10 years then at ours well we'd need uh, we need a lot of irrigation that's the main thing because the that's the big issue at ours yeah is that we don't have rain like in the uk <laughs> and um uh, but they have a cunning plan for that yeah are you eating one of their apples no. i picked it on the floor These are really pretty, I wonder what they are. Which one's the little red ones on yeah. there? And they're fenced here, aren't they? Mm. Which means we could, if we fenced like this, have sheep in the same orchard, couldn't we? Yeah. And chickens, actually. There's, I've spotted some chickens down the other end, and that'd be good cover, and they also keep the insects down, don't they, in orchards? Mm. Gosh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Like Christmas decorations. We need to get the names of the varieties, I think, yeah, don't we? Really I think in general it's good to have a lot of different varieties, also for pollination, because you, yeah, you need the cross pollination to have a lot of fruits, and if you have different varieties, it means some um, uh, pollinate the others, and uh, so it makes. Uh, they, in general, the more trees, the better the pollination. Hmm. I planted four meters apart. Is that very precise? So, well, it gives an <laughs> idea of the how much they spread. And is it four across as well as four down the, the yeah, roots? It looks like it, yeah. They, pl they are planted in squares. The problem when you, they are too close is that you can't drive the tractor in between if you need to shred or things like that. 
but that's still uh, we've still got quite a narrow tractor haven't we yeah 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 and uh, yeah but you need to take into account the low branches yeah because um, yeah you could uh, you could drive the tractor here i guess so we've got Rob here now, who right. is working at Clink's, and he's got the most phenomenal chicken set up here, uh, which I'm very jealous of. And you built this from scratch, didn't you? I did, yeah, it was built, yeah. It's long ago, I never sort of two years <sighs> building it. But, um, just pallets. And pallets you used for it? It's all pallets on the sides. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah. It's yeah, it's handy because you get, a, you know, you can set it up here and then move it about once the yeah. piece bare or, as like I said, this bottom end floods in the winter time, so. Oh, does it? It's just handy to move it from there to there and yeah. where you need it to be. chickens don't need a massive amount of room, they just need fresh um, pickings, don't they, really? I mean, the more you room you can give them, the yeah. better. But I liked what you were saying about um, that you can let them out sometimes and then close them in when you need to as well. Yeah. And they play a useful role in the orchard, don't they, eating the insects? Oh, I think they do, yeah. Mm. yeah. That and whatever fruit drops on the floor. Yeah. And things like that, they do. Yeah. Yeah, I think we might try and do the same at ours. And have sheep. Did you say you have sheep up here sometimes he does, as well? Yeah, just dry sheep in here. Oh, fantastic. And that's why you have to have the fences around them. I think that's why they why they were put up initially. Yeah. But you see now those trees are... They're a bit more a established. Bit more yeah. It's a beautiful orchard. I can't believe it's only 11 years old. Mm. Oh, thank you for showing us. No Rob just told me about this little box here in the garden, which is a dirt box for the chickens. They really care about their animals here so much. Because um, it means that when it's wet out here, as it is often in the UK, and if it's all grass and lush, they need somewhere to have a dirt bath because that's how they get the mites and fleas off them. And at ours, it's so dry that they generally don't have a problem finding the dust. I like this view. Mark's got a baby in his arms and Rob's got a chicken in his arms. <laughs> Yeah, but he knows apple, and it's close enough for the moment. These ones are really nice. That's windfall. As in, it was on the ground. Ah, no. Okay. Yeah, that do. These are. Um, these are Williams, aren't they? This is a very round bodied pair. It's not a doyen, is it? I don't know, I don't know much about pears actually. But um, if you look at the shape, you know, it's bell shape. Sort of yeah. It's all those in the What's interesting, I think, here is the success rate of planting the trees because. I just noticed there's only one gap that I've seen. Someone's entering the bed. Is that nice, my love? The other thing is, it's not far off the size we of the space we've got to plant to this little orchard, is yeah. it? Mm. And it's impressive how much they fitted into that space. Mm. I mean, we're talking about. Something between 80 and 100 plants, I th uh, trees in here, I think. Hello, chocos. Hello, choco, chocos. <laughs> Gosh, it's bucolic. This one. <gasps> Pink Look fish. at that. And that's quite cool. Yeah. The colour is incredible. In the sun, it's uh, really bright red, and it's pink inside. Oh, I love that. Quite juicy. 
this field that surrounds the orchard is used for pollination friendly um, plants and they cut it at different times of the year and they have flowers, wildflowers growing and look at Rob playing with his cockerel, that's really funny, it's like a little dog. I think that's another really good idea that we might like to employ at ours. This is the agroforestry area. The idea is about growing multiple types of crops all together. And so you have trees, fruit trees, interspersed with vegetable growing. That's also another thing we'd be interested in doing, isn't it, Mark? Yep, very much, very much so. And what are the benefits of doing it like that? Well, you get a better rotation of the uh, the, well, uh, you, a better use of the soil uh, because you get synergies between the the different types of crops. So the um, the vegetables, some vegetables will enrich the, the the soil, which benefits to the the trees. And uh, yeah, so basically you get the um, you get the produce from the trees as well as the the vegetables. I mean, we would never do anything on this scale at ours because we never want to be commercial farmers, but it's uh, nice to see it in action. We've got something for you. Oh, heart-shaped flint. Amy? Yeah, baby. Amy? Oh, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> there was a record made of all the big one two rockets that were fired from, from the European mainland, uh, Holland, mainly, in World War II, during the Second World War. And um, there's a record of a V2 rocket landing somewhere over there, in the field over there. Somebody local remembers it uh, landing during the war. Huh. And it's because we're quite close to the coast around here, really, aren't we? So yeah, I mean, that, that V2 was probably aimed at Norwich. Hmm. Most of them were aimed at London. But they were not very accurate <laughs> because one of them fired them. I don't think there was, there was much of a guidance system. Is it a tractor, baby? <laughs> it's not really a tractor, is it? It's an irrigation system. Yeah, but you pull it behind the tractor. I think he misses home and the tractors, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you like the farm, my love? Because you know if we plant one like this, you're going to have to harvest everything. <laughs> What noise do they make? <laughs> Time for a spot of blackberrying at the end of the day.
So we've been having some discussions in recent days about uh, where we want to start the orchard and these were brought to a particular head because Mark went shopping on his own, always a dangerous thing, and came back with a large range of bargain um, old variety apple trees, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, actually I'm really pleased about that. It's, uh, I went to a discount shop where they sell very random stuff and uh, often uh, yeah they have uh, dodgy looking plants or uh, dodgy looking things in general <laughs> but this time they had the end of stock of uh, probably a plant nursery somewhere in Italy and I brought back I think 13 different varieties of uh, Italian, all the Italian varieties that I had never heard of and I find it really exciting because they are also really, really uh, healthy trees. The issue we've got is where to plant them, haven't we? Yeah, and we so know this is this is what we call the old orchard. Um, uh, and there are some old fruit trees here, but we're not totally sure where exactly we should plant them at the moment, are we? Well, I have my idea. <laughs> and I have mine. <laughs> but yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> so my idea was originally to put um, apples and pears in that part of the, the orchard because the soil is quite deep. It's a bit more sheltered and uh, a bit more in the shade than the rest of the orchard. Yeah. And so I think the I think they would do really well. And also, um, do you remember that nice orchard we visited? Yeah. It, I could really see the, the atmosphere of uh, a little orchard with the, surrounded by these walls. Yeah. Because uh, the, the function, the original function of these of, uh, walls like that in a garden was to keep the heat for, to create microclimates for plants. And that helps the fruits to mature. Yeah. Um, and so to me, it's uh, this kind of Woods was uh, was functional before for uh, for uh, food production for the chateau. Yeah. My only issue with this bit is that I thought it was going to be um, a sort of picnic area. It's a really nice enclosed bit at the corner, and you can see through to the Alps and things like that. You like your picnics. I don't do you? like my picnics. So how many picnic areas <laughs> with do we are you planning in the garden? Well, let's look at it another way. I think this area is where I had imagined there being an orchard and there really was an orchard before. And so what if with our th first 13 trees, we start here and there are walls and it is sheltered and it is the old orchard. And then if we decide over time, it's not looking at me like that. If we decide over time, we can spread into that little corner there. What if we had picnics on that side? <laughs> No, but the thing is, we don't have very many parts of our land that are flat. That's why I'm hesitant to plant trees on them, because we have so many like rolling bits and rocks and slopes that I feel like I want to make the most of flatter areas for other things. That's exactly my point, because it's a lot easier to, um, to shred the grass in an orchard when it's flat than when it's Yeah, but you can do that on here. That's not difficult, but you can't easily have a picnic on a slope or you roll down it. There's a slope here. Not much. Not yes. much. It's sort of the flat same and slope. then flat. Can and we start there's here? There's a flat we... <laughs> area down there where you can have a picnic. What do you think about just starting in the old orchard first though? Well, I think I won't have much choice. <laughs> Since we have uh, jointly decided <laughs> that we would plant here, um, uh, we need to mark the spots for, uh, for the trees. Uh, so I suggest we align them on these two yeah. and start making uh, lines from here yeah. uh, down uh, Okay. And we'll use the okay. same sort of distances as at Clinks, do you think? Yeah, there were, uh, these there are... ones were planted every four meters, which yeah. is uh, I think the same... Uh, yeah, that's what we found yeah. there, wasn't it? So okay. yeah, we can keep the, the same kind of distance. Brilliant!